I was drawn to the topic of rural health and the history of rural health because I was interested to see how the story of health unfolded when medicine in the forms in which we're familiar wasn't present. When people were a hundred miles um, down a road totally snowed in, a hundred miles from a doctor or a hospital, when they didn't have access to um, help with childbirth or with influenza or with infection, uh, infectious disease um, or with dealing with accidents. So, so I was interested as a historian of health in, and medicine in how things unfolded when the structures of medicine were not there. I began looking at the Peace River District in Northeast BC because I discovered that the Rockefeller Institution, Institute, the Rockefeller Institute had um, invested heavily in that, in rural health in that region. And I thought, why the heck were they interested in that place? It was in the early 20th century, it was indeed the back of beyond. I think they were interested because it was considered, you know, the last best west and, you know, the last frontier for agricultural settlement in Canada, in English Canada. Um, and so I went up to the Peace River and I wanted to talk to the older women about their mother's memories of the local health unit. and. Um, I was also interested in women's institutes and in the role played by the women's institutes in pushing the government for better health services in rural, rural parts of Canada. But when I got a group of women together to talk to me, these are older women who would have been um, young girls when their families had moved to the Peace River as pioneers in the early 20th century. You know. A lot of people went there during the Depression years because they were pushed out of um, of the prairie of their prairie farm homesteads by the drought. So they had nothing left except for this opportunity of cheap or free land um, in the Peace River district. So I got these women together, and instead they regaled me with stories of. Um, frantic trips to the hospital and dousing deep gashes with kerosene and um, using flour in a bag, wrapping that at a wound to st st uh, stop the flow of blood and trying to get giving birth, their mother's giving birth en route to the hospital when it was minus 30 because they didn't make it there in time or calling their neighbor to come and help them give birth and the kinds of home remedies that they would use, mustard plasters, things that I knew nothing about, but I do now, uh, about um, having nine different gardens and um, the kind of canning they would do, picking berries um, with their neighbors and preserving those for the winter so they wouldn't get scurvy, um, bringing rhubarb roots with them to the new place or learning about food and health options from the indigenous peoples of the region. So it exploded my notion of health, actually, talking to those. It totally reworked my notion of health, and it made me realize um, how hard I'd been working as a mother creating health in my own home. So for me, it was a very, it became a much different research project, but I think really speaks to rurality and rural health. What I took away from my research in the Peace River was this notion that health is both much more complicated than we think of it, mm -hmm. because we think of health equals doctor, nurse, hospital, um, and and much more everyday, and um, that, it's, that it's in the actions uh, that we perform every day what we eat, how we take care of our kids, how we take care of our parents, um, and how we take care of our own bodies. So I have a much, I think I learned a lot doing my 
work on the Peace River from the women of the peace. Yeah.